year-old Pooja is returning to her village. She's just had an operation that she hopes will change her life. We've just arrived at Pooja's village and for the last five minutes she hasn't stopped grinning. She's really excited. Pooja is one of millions of people in India who've been diagnosed with leprosy. As we're walking, Pooja's picking up the pace. The grin is just getting bigger and bigger. Leprosy carries huge stigma here, but Pooja has had an operation to repair her right hand. She feels different. She feels like she's got rid of the disease. Her hand is now better, and she's just so much more confident. I was about to experience the lives of Pooja and other remarkable people who are fighting back against this ancient disease. which is one of India's fastest growing cities. It's busy, it's modern, and it's economically booming. But I'm about to see a different side of the city. I'm heading to the outskirts to a leprosy colony called Shantinagar. I'd come here to meet Narsapa. I'd heard the people in the colony look to him as a leader. He told me all the residents were forced to live here as they weren't accepted anywhere else. Even though they're no longer contagious, they were still persecuted. Narsapa said the people here were outcasts and left to fend for themselves. He took me to the colony clinic, set up with the help of a charity, after residents were regularly turned away from public hospitals. I found 70-year-old Dugaya having an ulcer on his leg cleaned. <laughs> Dugaya said leprosy had caused him to lose sensation in his legs. He said he'd accidentally burnt himself and now infection from the wounds had spread across both feet. How often do you have to change the dressings? He told me the ulcers on his feet needed to be cleaned at least once a day to stop the infection spreading, but that's not always possible. He did do it yesterday, but before that he went more than two weeks without having it done because there just weren't enough supplies here in the clinic. The disease is prevalent all over the country. It leaves millions disabled. I've never seen anything like this before. There are flies all over the room and they're being attracted straight to this ulcer. Both feet are infected and the smell is incredible. Dugaya lives with his wife, Pachama. Narsapa said they'd been forced out of their homes almost 50 years ago. How did your family react when you first got the disease? Dugaya was 15 when he first found out he had leprosy and his family would make him sit outside of the house. When they fed him, they literally threw the food at him and he only caught up with that for a year before he decided to move out. Pechama was married with a child when she was diagnosed. She said her husband kicked her out, so she went to stay with her parents. And even they wouldn't allow her to feed her baby. They said that her breast milk may infect the child. The neighbors were so afraid of her that when she had blisters on her knees, they didn't even want a fly that had touched the blister to come and touch them. Partilu, Mandulu, 
After leaving their homes, they married and found sanctuary in Shantinagar. They say it's thanks to Narsapa, they've now got a bus pass, a rice ration and a pension. Thousands of people affected by leprosy in Hyderabad have benefited from Narsapa's campaigning. Today, he's mobilized a group who say the government is not providing the basic medical supplies they're entitled to. I joined angry residents from the colony as they headed to the local health ministry office. Thus, the town's finally turned up. This was the first time I'd seen Narsapa and the others outside of the colony. It was clear some on the bus weren't comfortable with their presence. Such is the stigma, many are terrified of catching leprosy. As soon as we got on the bus, there was a reaction from everyone who was already on. All the affected people have gathered together and are sitting on the same seats, and everyone else is whispering to each other. They clearly don't want to be on a bus with these people. Leprosy is thought to be an airborne infection, but 95% of humans are immune. The disease attacks nerve endings, destroying the ability to feel pain and injury. This makes patients susceptible to ulcers and infections. Simple things like bandages, swabs and iodine are vital to the colony. When was the last time the clinic actually got any supplies? The last 2008 March. He said that since 2008, the situation had become increasingly desperate. He says that for the last two years, the clinic in his colony hasn't received regular supplies. Nasapa also told me his requests for help had been ignored. He's been here so many times he's lost count and the people who work here know his face. But whenever he speaks to them, they pass the buck. They say that without authorization from people higher up, there's nothing they can do. The local government official in charge of leprosy services agreed to meet him. Nasap has just gone in for his meeting, but uh, Dr. Jairam, who he's having a meeting with, has asked us not to film, so we're waiting outside. Apart from Narsapa, none of the people here were used to challenging the authorities. Narsapa has just had a 10 minute meeting with the doctor. He doesn't seem to have got very far and so now everyone's been asked to go into the office. There are now 20 leprosy affected people in this man's office. They're threatening that they're going to come back every week if they don't get the equipment they need. Back at Shantinagar, Narsapa told me about his experience of being diagnosed and how it had driven him to help others. ఇలాంటి <laughs> That night, Narsapa took me to the funeral of his friend Gopal. He'd suffered from leprosy, but had died of old age. The funeral took place on a patch of waste ground next to a public cemetery. Can you tell me, why is this man being buried here? <laughs> Say, Pashitanamudara, Padisunam Tabi, Amen.
Many people consider leprosy to be a curse, a punishment for sins committed in a previous life. Even after death, they believe the disease is still contagious, so people like Gopal are buried in graves away from everyone else. It's really moving for me to see that this discrimination against leprosy affected people carries on even after they're dead. And it's proof to me that this has nothing to do with people being afraid of catching the disease. This man's dead, but they still don't think he's worthy to share the same ground as their relatives. Every day, Nalsaka gets calls from people asking for help. I followed him to the city to meet 36 year old Datu. For many who've had leprosy, it's difficult to find work. Datu is one of tens of thousands who are forced to beg to survive. How long have you been begging for a living? Datu told me he'd been begging on the streets for 10 years. He said he makes less than a pound a day, with which he has to feed his whole family. He sleeps on the streets here as well. There's a special area where leprosy affected people can sleep without being troubled by the police. How do people treat you? He said that when he's out begging, people won't put money into his hands. He has to hold out a tin so he can throw the money at him. Food stalls refuse to serve him. And if he asks for a glass of water, he has to bring his own cup because they won't let him drink from theirs. After being diagnosed with leprosy, Datu was driven from his home. He had to leave everything behind, including land he'd inherited. Since then, someone else has taken it over. Nasapa has convinced him to meet a human rights lawyer who might be able to help with the case. Is this a common complaint? Basic problem with iron discrimination. Shaquille told me that property disputes are one of the most common difficulties people affected by leprosy face. He said they often lack the confidence to stand up for themselves. He is absolutely certain that if Datu wasn't affected by leprosy, he would have pursued it a long time ago. Do you think you'll be taking up this case? Surely we will be taking up this case. So you got quite emotional during the meeting with the lawyer. What, what was it? Thank you. At 10 years old, Narsaka was abandoned by his family. He offered to take me back to the village he was born in. His parents are dead, but his brother still lives there. They've tried to stay in touch, but the last time they saw each other was three years ago. We've just arrived in the village and we're walking towards Nasapa's brother's house. He's gone unusually quiet. He introduced me to his brother, Chandrapa. Namaste. Do you remember when Nasapa left the village? What did your parents say about him when he'd gone? What's it like now when Nasapa comes back and you see how he is now and you hear about his life? What do you think of it all? 
దేనికొచ్చి భగవంతునికి తెలియదు ఇప్పుడు మంచిగా ఉన్నాడు చిత్తూరు బాగున్నాడు ఎక్కడ పోయినా కానీ దేవుడు ఎందుకు ఉన్నాడు బాగున్నాడు Has anybody else in the village had leprosy since? <laughs> After everything our sapper had experienced, he wanted to meet the girl and see if she needed help. Hmm. Are you sure? Yes. How can you tell? Because the blisters are here. డాక్టర్ ఎవరు రారా మీ దగ్గరికి ఇంటికి రారా ఎవరు This has just turned into a very sensitive situation. In English, Nasaf was telling me that he's 100% certain this girl has leprosy and he thinks it's quite an advanced case. She may even be contagious, but he can't say that. So he's telling everybody that she'll get treatment and she'll be absolutely fine. If he says anything other than that, she'll be cast out of the village. <laughs> Mama, have you ever been given any drugs to treat your disease? She said her local health center gave her a course of medicine. They said she'd have to go to the government hospital for more, but she hadn't been able to. Why didn't you? She says she doesn't have the money to go and everyone in her house is either too ill or too old to accompany her. In 2005, based on targets set by the World Health Organization, the Indian government claimed it had eliminated leprosy. But there are still 130,000 new cases every year. Many say the real number could be a lot higher. Nasa, but how do you feel coming away from your village? Look, I'm going to talk to you, sir. నేను కూడా ఆరోగ్యకరంగా ఉంటే వీళ్ళతో పాటు ఇక్కడతో నేను కూడా ఇక్కడే ఉండేవాడిని కదా వీళ్ళతో పాటు ఉంటే బాగుండి ఉండేదేమో పోయి సమాజానికి దూరంగా లెప్రసీ కాయలో ఉంటూ నేను పదిహేను ఎక్కడ ఉంటాను అనేదానికంటే కూడా పదిహేను వరకు అసలు ఇది అందరికీ తెలిసి ఈ వ్యాధి గురించి మొత్తం తెలిసి సర్జరీ The staff introduced me to a patient, 15-year-old Pooja. Pooja, hi. I'm Shay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. When did you first realize that you had leprosy? Pooja said she first realized something was wrong when she was washing up. There was a strange numb feeling in her fingers, and then over the following weeks, chores became increasingly difficult. she tried to sweep in in the back garden and the broom would fly out of her hand she tried and cut grass and bushes and she dropped the machete nahi turand bataye usse sab log marne lage ki pooja said she told but they thought she was just trying to get out of doing her chores people in the village instantly started talking she'd be walking along to go and collect water and she'd hear people saying that she was infected with evil spirits that the disease would never go away that even once she'd been treated she was going to be a risk to all of them jo 
Fuja was waiting to have an operation that would fix the deformity in her hand. Are you nervous? Later that day, I followed Pooja to the operating theatre. It's an action. The senior surgeon, Dr. Primal Das, explained that leprosy has damaged the nerves in Pooja's hand, making the tendons tighten and giving her clawed fingers. In her case, she is not able to bring her fingers up straight, so we decided to be like that. Dr. Das's father and grandfather worked in leprosy hospitals. He carries out 500 operations like this every year. So this is Fuji's third operation. Yeah, the, the first one was to correct the four fingers. Mm -hmm. The second one is for the thumb. I don't do fingers and thumb at the same time. This is a really life-changing procedure, isn't it? I think the problem with leprosy is its deformity. And if we can reverse that deformity, most people in the villages will never know that she has it. So that's the idea. Exactly. So a lot of it is not just functional, it has to be cosmetic as well. So yes, she would definitely make it easier for her to hold the pen and build her confidence in herself. So. This hospital runs very efficiently and they clearly do this a lot. As Pooja's operations being finished, another patient's being brought in and the same happened just before her. It means they can get through a huge number of patients here every year. A contact gave me a recent unpublished government study of the number of new leprosy cases in India. This was the first time in six years health workers had carried out extensive surveys. The findings suggest the official figures don't show the true scale of leprosy. In one Indian state, health workers found the number of people infected was five times the official estimate. I asked Dr. Das what he thought. We have no idea of what is the leprosy situation at the moment, because for the past 10 years, no NGO has been uh, doing any active case detection. They did a few surveys in certain places and they found the number to be almost 15 times. I cannot say that yes, the overall figure would be 15 times the number. If it is, it would be catastrophic. How has meeting this eradication target affected the budgets of your hospital? Because they said, okay, leprosy is no more a public health problem in India. We are struggling with budgets. It's very difficult to convince a donor that the funds are actually for leprosy because they don't even think leprosy is a problem. A quarter of a million people in the world are living with leprosy. It's easily treatable with simple drugs which are given free to everyone. Millions have been cured, but I'd learned they're often left disabled and marginalized through fear, stigma and rejection. It's two days after Pooja had the operation on her hand and she's being discharged today. We've arranged to follow her home. Although she was nervous about seeing the other villagers, Pooja was looking forward to seeing her family. just arrived at Pooja's village and for the last five minutes she hasn't stopped grinning. She's really excited. She's going to lead me to her house now. Okay. As we're walking, Pooja's picking up the pace. The grin is just getting bigger and bigger. Okay. Namaste. Pooja's mother was there to welcome her home. Yeah. For now, she seems happy, but her future is far from certain. She says not much has changed since she's been away, but she feels different. She feels like she's got rid of the disease. Her hand is now better, and she's just so much more confident about everything. Yeah.
<laughs> if you want to find out more about leprosy in India or any of the other issues covered on Unreported World, visit our website at channel4.com slash unreported world. Next Friday, 7.30, it's the Child Soldiers of the Eastern Congo. Now, you can also go to channel4.com slash unreported world to download a podcast of tonight's program and watch video extras.